Hello to my crafty friends at the Stampin' Scrapbook Expo group. It's great to have you here with me today. I'm Trisha Morris from Club Scrap, and today we'll be making not one, but two of these adorable gift purses filled with six greeting cards each made with one Club Scrap Zest for Life card kit. Now that's the January card kit just released on the first of the year and I can't wait to show you how easily this comes together. So these are the two beautiful purses we'll be making today. I think they're going to bring a lot of joy to whoever receives them and that's also a practical gift because the person can then turn around and use the cards inside to spread a whole lot more joy. So this is the Club Scrap Zest for Life card kit. It includes 11 sheets of paper, some cut aparts, and all kinds of ribbons and embellishments and envelopes. I'm going to be using all the papers in this kit plus I've added one sheet of 12 by 12 white plain paper. I hope that all of you have something like this on hand to add to the mix and that rounds out our papers to a total of 12 sheets that we're going to be trimming today plus the cut aparts. To complete this project you'll also need some other basic tools like your 12 inch bypass style trimmer. This one from Fiskars is my favorite. I am staying organized with my accordion pocket file organizer. I did find a set of just eight silver mini brads. You can use the brads in any color um, and even size as well, but some sort of a fastener is needed to attach the handles to the purse. I'm going to review with you the papers that I've selected for this particular project. And as with all Club Scrap projects, this can be adapted to other collections we released as well. I'm starting out with two of these light yellow 12 by 12 planes one of this really fun lemon print, two orange planes, two lime green planes, two white planes. Now remember, one of these was included in the kit and I've added an additional sheet. Then the other um, lemon print that comes with the collection, a darker yellow that comes with the collection. And then again, I've also have the cut aparts that came with the card kit that helped me finish off the cards. Most of our projects begin by trimming all of the papers required to complete the entire project. This is no exception. So I'm going to take the, the light yellow papers and I do need to find our grain direction of the paper. So as always, I hold the paper by an edge and then rotate and hold by the other edge. And I just study if the paper is droopy and flexible or if it's stiff and not flexible. In this case, the paper dips easily in this direction and that's how it has to land in my trimmer. The reason for that is that this paper will eventually be folded and we always like to fold with the grain. So I'll trim at 11 and a quarter, 10 and a half, and nine to get things started. This piece is going to be set aside to be scored. This will be set aside for a scrap pile. And then these four pieces end up being part of the handle. So I'm also going to set those aside. I trimmed both of those papers at the same time. Next, I'm going to take one print and we'll trim at 11 and a half. The grain direction should dip easily top to bottom. Trim at 11 and a half. 11. 10 and a half. 10, nine and a half, eight and a quarter, seven, lots of numbers here, and three and a half. Now I'm aware I'm going way too fast for you to do this with me. So the idea is to just follow along, see how it all comes together. And once you decide you wanna tackle this project, go back and watch this video, which will be available uh, to watch at a later time again at your own pace. Now I've stacked up the two three and a half by 12s. We'll trim at 11 and a half and five and three quarters. That creates four panels that are the same size. I'm going to take those and put them aside. And then these are two little scraps. Now from the pieces that we trimmed, there should be two strips that are one and a quarter by 12. I'm going to cut these horizontally at eight and a half and five. So the five inch pieces get set aside for decorating our cards. And then these smaller pieces, there should be a total of four. Those go with the materials that we're gonna use to make our purses. Lastly, there is a series of five half inch strips. 
Four of them are used to make our purse and the other is set aside. So again, you can see here is the purse handle and there's the solid light yellow and then the nested print on top of the handle. Now I'm gonna take the two orange papers I've set aside, check the green direction, and this time I want the paper to dip easily from the left to the right. And that again is indicated in the instructions with that arrow pointing left and right. From this, we're gonna make some panels and card bases which we're at eight and a half, and then rotate and cut at 11, and five and a half. These four pieces make four card bases. So that happened really quick. I'm just gonna uh, file those in, in any pocket of your choice. Here we have some strips to set aside, and then there should be one more uh, long, narrow strip. We'll trim horizontally at nine and a half and four and three quarters. I'm gonna go ahead and take these four panels and just put them in the file, any pocket. I have two more sheets of the lime plane. I will check the grain direction, make sure we're dipping, dipping easily left to right, because that's the direction the paper will eventually be folded. I'm gonna repeat the same exact trimming instructions as I did for the orange. Next, I'm gonna follow, again, the same exact trimming instructions with the two sheets of white paper that I have set aside. We're almost finished with all of the trimming. I'm gonna take the remaining lemon print and then the dark yellow plane and just stack those together. And we're gonna make some panels. So we'll cut at 10 and a half and five and a quarter. Rotate and trim that five and a quarter at eight and four. And then these can be filed in any pocket. And then we'll repeat for the other long strip, trim at eight and four. We'll set these panels aside, and then you should have two skinny strips to set aside as embellishments for later. I'm gonna swap out my trimmer for a score pal, and I will begin by taking this larger nine by 12 uh, light yellow color, and I'm gonna score vertically at one and a half and seven and a half. Then rotate this paper without flipping it, and we'll score horizontally at five and a quarter, and six and three quarters. Now this is an important step. I'm gonna flip the paper from bottom to top and score at three quarters and 11 and a quarter. Now because we're making two of these purses, I have to repeat the same exact thing for a second sheet. You also have all of these five and a half by eight and a half inch card bases. And one option would be to score each one horizontally at four and a quarter. Another option, if you didn't already learn this tip from me in the past, is to place the piece into the score pal vertically and use the score pal as a jig to help you line up the edges perfectly. And since we did trim the paper with the grain direction, uh, cooperating with the direction of our fold, you can really get a nice crisp fold even without scoring. So repeat the folding in half for all 12 of your card bases. Once you have them all folded in half, you can see that these uh, fold lines need burnishing. So then just take your uh, bone folder and just burnish the entire stack of cards all at once. And now you have 12 card bases ready to go. We'll set those aside and let's work on just making one purse together. Next, we need to take scissors and remove some darts from the center of our scored piece. So I'm going to trim right along the edge of the score line to basically remove it. And I'm gonna trim again right next to it. Just basically remove the score line itself and remove a tiny little dart from this paper. I want the straightest line of my cut, it needs to, needs to be straight, right along the, the edge there, and then this tab that is formed that you can have a slight angle. Then I'll rotate the paper and repeat to remove darts from this side as well. With my scissors, I stop when I reach the intersecting score line. Next, I'll go to one of the edges where there's a half inch scored area, and I'm only gonna remove this rectangular corner plus the score line. So the score line goes away, and the paper corner goes away. 
Do this only on one end. Next, I'm going to grab something that I can pierce through. I have a piece of cork board underneath here, and I'm going to position my paper so it's in front of me vertically. And I'll use a grid ruler, which you might be familiar with, to pierce some holes for our handles into um, these half inch scored areas on each end. So from this score line to this score line is six inches. So if I place my ruler at three and three, my ruler is centered. And if I bring the ruler up three eighths of an inch from the bottom edge of this paper, I'm going to be centered. So I'm going to go one cube is an eighth, then we have a quarter, and then I have three eighths of an inch up from the bottom edge, and I'm going to pierce one inch from the score line. So basically I'm piercing at two on each side. And there I have my two pierced holes. I'm going to turn this over. Once again, go one, two, three eighths. And I'm centered at three and three on either side. So I'll pierce at two and two. So now I have pierced holes to attach my handles at the exact same spot on each end. Now, if you're working with both of these at the same time, you can pierce through. In fact, I could just do that. Just transfer the holes to your second piece to save you a little bit of time later on. Now position your purse material so that it's in front of you with the bumps of the score lines facing down on the left and the right and the center. And then you should have bumps of the score lines facing up at the top and bottom. Next, there were a series of printed and yellow papers that we trimmed that are used on the purse. And what you need to do is arrange those papers onto the purse exactly as shown here. So I'm distributing one larger rectangle that is framed in nicely by these score lines closest to the base of what will be the purse and then two other pieces that fit on the sides right next to it and then it will receive one other rectangle on the other side so they have all the space up here and down below that's what we want and then i also have two strips that are plain and then two printed strips all of these pieces need to be nested as shown I'm using my adhesive transfer gun. If you do a lot of crafting and you don't have one of these, take some time to research and consider picking one up. It definitely is the most economically friendly, environmentally friendly, and a time friendly way to adhere things to other things. I should mention you also need to make sure that those notches are at the top and that the three other pieces in a row are on the other side. To adhere the narrow strips onto the plain paper. I'm just going to be using Club Scraps book binding glue dispensed from a needle tipped applicator. Since this piece is kind of thin and I want it adhered very, very well, I want a good bond. So that's why I'm going to use my liquid glue for this project. Now I have one other score line that I need to make on these little strips. So I'm going to place the strip horizontally into my score pal and score at 11 and a half and do so with the print facing up and I'm going to rotate it 180 degrees and do the same thing. So I'm basically scoring each end at 11 and a half, which is really a half inch score line, but because I'm right handed, it's easier to score at 11 and a half. I'll grab my cork board one last time. I'm going to fold on the score line to bury it. So the bump of the score is underneath here. I'm going to fold it and I'm going to pierce through the visual center of that area. So again, fold and center a pierced hole into that spot. Repeat for the other handle. Next, take your prepared purse structure and I'm going to fold over these flaps at the top and the bottom. One flapped area will have the full length and the other will just be a portion with those other tabs removed. A lot of thought went into finding ways to hide the prongs of the brads involved with holding the handle to the purse. So now what you need to do is take one brad and bring it through the pierced hole here and also through the pierced hole on this tab and then open the prongs of the brad at the back. Repeat that for the other side of the handle and see how it's forming. And make sure the print side of your handle is facing the print of the purse as well. Now with this attached, I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. 
Next, with the handles perfectly attached, I'll take some Club Scraps book binding glue again. This is the same adhesive I used for the purse handles layering. And I'll apply the glue to the entire flap where the prongs are, and then close the flap and burnish it carefully so that the prongs are hidden between the flap. This also acts as a nice reinforcement for the purse handle. I mean, just in case you wanted to, you know, walk around the mall with it or something. We did the same thing on the other side. Next, flip the project over and pre-fold on every scored line. Make sure that, you know, here's the bump of the score line so the bump is getting buried. Don't forget to do the center folds as well. At this point, we're on the final step of making the purse. Now remember, we have a, a pretty side and then we have the plain side. So I will apply some adhesive to this tab and to the back of the printed area. Just make sure you're gonna have enough adhesive so that you get a nice bond. Now close the tab onto the plain surface and then close this flap so the print side is facing out. And just try to make sure you have a nice angle form. If you wanna set it on your work surface, you can. And I have another little tip. We have these awesome little mini grid rulers at Club Scrap. This grid ruler happens to be the same width as the wall of my box, so or purse rather. So you can just put the ruler inside the base of the purse like this on the sidewall and push down to burnish that uh, thoroughly. Another thing you can do is just take your bone folder and put it down inside the purse as well. Now the other side, I'm gonna do the same thing. So I'm bringing the print kind of back and the plain wall goes in and we'll apply our adhesive to the back of this tab and the back of the decorated sidewall. Now that it's dry, you can also make your second purse using the same exact steps. And isn't that just completely adorable? I love this little purse. I think anyone would be thrilled to receive it as a gift. And we can prepare to assemble our cards. Now in my accordion packet file, I set aside all of these little panels. And now would be the time to grab those along with your card bases. Now this is what I call the deal. I have everything in front of me to make a dozen cards. So deal four white card bases, four green card bases, and four orange card bases. So these are all five and a half by eight and a half folded in half to make a standard basic invitation size. Now in our stack of uh, panels, I have some prints and some planes, and you can distribute those to the card bases however you like. It's just kind of neat that they're uh, alternating because of the way we trimmed our paper. And then we also have additional um, panels that are one size smaller, but will nest perfectly. So I'll distribute those um, just in an interesting way to try to add variety of color whenever possible. This is just totally random. You can do it however you want. So now I have all of my card bases ready for sentiments. Again, I have all of the sentiments here. These are designed for actually a different set of cards. So they were adapted slightly to finish the 12. And I'm just going to take the last moments and show you what I did with the cards and the pile of scraps that was created as we were trimming the few papers that we had to trim. So we've got this fun sentiment. And then I used other ribbons and embellishments like the little dots and the gingham and the twine and the envelopes that were included in the kit were used to finish off these adorable cards. We have this tag, the, the enamel dots are so sweet. You're simply the zest. I also used the silver, silver citrus slices. Uh, glue those on with my book binding glue that works really well for attaching any metal objects to paper. So those are the six cards in that purse. And then in the second purse, again, I have another half dozen just again, adapting whatever was happening. I just, when life gives you lemons, keep them because hey, free lemons. What a year this week has been thinking of you. So lots of just fun uh, and appropriate sentiments for all types of occasions.
Now that I've shown you how to make these adorable purses, I hope that you're inspired to become a member of the Club Scrap family. We do release page kits and card kits every single month, and this again is the January Zest for Life collection. I have a very special shopping code available for you just this week, so if you are interested in joining or doing a little bit of shopping, you'll receive free shipping and orders over $50 if you use the code PURSE at checkout. I also have a special landing page I've made for you. It's clubscrap.com forward slash purse. Please stay tuned for more fun projects we're offering here at Club Scrap. We'd love to see you soon.